Processing data can be complicated, especially when the volume of data is variable and even more so when the data is streaming. There's lots of it out there and you usually need to work with it before you can start to get some value out of it. But how do you work with data efficiently and how do you scale it? In these videos, we're going to talk about Apache Beam, a flexible and open source tool for processing data. Specifically, it's built to unify batch and streaming parallel data processing. Let's start by talking about why Beam exists and then go through how it works. You may be familiar with the original MapReduce paper from back in 2004. Over the years, the usage of MapReduce grew exponentially in Google, but people started running into limitations with complex multi-stage pipelines. The answer to this was Flume Java, which was released as a paper around 2011. There was also a need for accurate, low latency scaled pipelines, which the mill wheel focused on. Shortly after, these two technologies came together to become the foundations for Apache Beam. Beam is designed to allow folks the freedom to compose highly expressive batch or streaming pipelines with the language of their choice, and to run those pipelines on a number of different runners. Supported languages include Java, Python, Go, and SQL. And you can also choose the runner, which is where the pipeline will actually be executed. For these videos, we'll be using Google Cloud Dataflow as our example runner. The flexibility of Beam goes beyond programming languages. It also covers lots of use cases. You can set up pipelines to deal with everything from simple transportation, which mainly involves ingestion and simple transformations, all the way to creating a continuous intelligence solution. As you can probably see, portability and scale are key parts of Apache Beam. So, Let's look deeper into how Beam works by going over pipelines and a few key concepts. Pipelines are basically the description of how you'll be working with data. Pipelines are essentially made up of one or more data sources, a collection of transformations, and then one or more places for the data to end up. This pipeline also represents a directed acyclic graph. Let's talk about some of the core primitives that make up a pipeline. A P collection is an immutable, unordered collection of values, and it can contain a bounded or unbounded number of elements. Beam uses P collection objects as inputs and outputs, operating on them with transforms. A P transform is an operation in a pipeline. These transforms are basically functions applied to each element of one or more input P collections. Depending on the runner, multiple workers are called a cluster, may execute the code in parallel. Ultimately, the transform produces one or more output P collections after the function is applied. Since P transforms input and output P collections, you can chain them together to make a pipeline. And then there's the pipeline itself. The pipeline object helps describe the relationship between P collections and P transforms. Since it can support one or more inputs and outputs, you can even chain together pipelines to support whatever kind of business logic you might need. As I said before, data can be tricky to deal with. These concepts might seem pretty straightforward when looking at batch data, but streaming event data can introduce more complexity. Thankfully, Beam is designed to handle both batch and streaming data processing with ease, thanks to the ability to group data using Windows. A window subdivides a P collection by using the timestamps of each individual element. There's multiple types of windows that can be used to group elements, such as fixed windows or session-based windows, based on clusters of events. It makes sense that an event probably has a timestamp of when it happened, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's when your data processing receives the event. Think about a mobile device that temporarily loses connection. You'll know the timestamp of when the event happens, like the different actions a user might take while playing a game offline. But when the device gets a connection and sends all of those events over at once, you may see a significant difference in the timestamps. That's why we separate event time from processing time. If you were to use the processing time as a window, you might end up with events in the wrong area and your groups could be mixing up events. Grouping by event time gives you the right groups, but that introduces another question. 
How do you know when you've received all of the data for a window? Handling late data is done with triggers and watermarks, but we'll talk about how that works in an upcoming video. So today we covered a brief introduction to Apache Beam and started to go over some of the key concepts. There's plenty more to cover. And in the next video, we'll go through an example of putting Beam to the test. If you'd like to learn more, check out the links in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.